<coughs> Good morning. It's been a while since I gave a talk. Uh, it's raining here in New York City. Rainy morning. This talk is going to be very general. It concerns a topic which is quite vast, right? I told you guys about quantum field theory books such as Ryder and Itzik and Zuber and so on and so forth. They're the big story of quantum field theory, the greatest story ever told according to Svetanovich. But I, this is an impressionistic point of view, right? So the main key players in this are, once again, R.P. Feynman, Julian Schwinger, Freeman Dyson. That's the basis of it. Feynman diagrams, okay? But when you get into Feynman diagrams more, how can I put it, artistically, then we talk about the work of Predrag Zetanovich and Benny Latraub. And there's an old Scottish poem of from ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, Lord deliver us, or something along those lines. And I don't know if anybody knows who wrote it or not. But anyway, the ghoulies and ghosties, in this case here, will be Feynman diagrams, okay? Now, the first thing we have to look at is, in quantum field theory, what is a particle? Well, it's not fully understood. For us, a particle is going to be a, an excitation of the vacuum. Some particles would be electrons. Another particle would be a photon. The theory of electrons and photons is called quantum electrodynamics. Another particle could be a meson. That would be represented by what's called a scalar field. Another particle could be a quark, and quarks and gluons, in their own theory, that's called quantum chromodynamics. It's a, a non-abelian version of QED, whatever that means. Doesn't matter about that. We're lodging straight into this. Usually people start off quantum field theory by going into all the various different types of symmetries, the idea of the path integral, and so on and so forth. Now suppose J is a source. That means a source or a sink. In other words, a particle can be created or destroyed. This J is abstract for now. We can rewrite it like that. This measure is totally abstract. And this action contains a differential operator. and the source. All right. Now this is a path integral from which you can start doing the mathematics. But we're skipping the, all the mathematics. We're just looking at the Feynman rules. Very abstractly, this is going to generate what's called a propagator. And these things here will generate interactions. Forget the mathematics for now. We're not going to even look at it. Path integral generating function. Oh yeah, Green's function. Yeah, I'm not putting in all the details. Okay. But we're not going to do that. We're not looking at the mathematics as such. We're just looking at the diagrams, and then we'll do an example. Now, my board has uh, got these things on it because it suffered some damage because I'm a chronic archer. I don't mean fancy bows. I mean horse bows, Mongolian bows, things like that. All right, so quantum field theory diagrammatically quantum field theory. So if you already know quantum field theory, you'll find this interesting. If you don't know quantum field theory, you can use it as a beginning and then start filling in the gaps later on. So,
Now, a particle will have attributes i. Now, what could they be? I forget, actually. Okay, we have all these indices here, spin, color, particle type, space-time coordinates, Minkowski and Euclidean indices, and we represent them collectively as an I, all right? Whatever that means. Now, what can a particle do? A particle can change its attributes. Any one or all of these things can change, and we represent that diagrammatically. And the diagrammatic representation of these attributes basically are called collectively Feynman rules. There are two fundamental classes of Feynman rules. First thing you do, a particle can do is, roughly speaking, it can change an attribute. Go, go from place to place, for example, or propagate. We'll call that delta ij, okay? Where all those attributes are collectively included in the indices i and j. The next thing a particle can do particle can change from one particle or split into two. Particles split into two, that could be like an interaction. Well, a particle could split into three. Now we have to look at these indices. What we have to do is the momenta at the vertex is conserved. That's just like um, what are the rules in electricity? The rules in electricity that says that current flows into a uh, a vertex, the current coming in, I1 in must be equal to I2 plus I3 plus I4. This can be expressed as a delta function. And it's called conserving momentum at a vertex. Oh, what are those rules in electricity? You know, when, this, the, for when, you, when you have circuits. I have a whole lecture on, on them. I just forget the name. Okay? So we conserve momentum at a vertex. And similarly here, you would have a more complicated conservation of momentum, just that there are four different momenta. What else could happen? The particles could split into four. One in, four out, and so on and so forth. We're not going to get to this point. We won't need to go beyond this one here for our examples. Okay. So we have propagators and vertices. We could call these interactions.
Propagators in Berta says, propagators and interactions. Now we're going to do a simple example. Oh, actually, we'll do uh, Green's functions first. Now I'm going to do a lot more on this. This is just a beginning, a beginning talk. Oh no, look at that. So, what do Green's functions look like? Well, we have a blob that represents all the various different things that can happen. I know that many particles are going to be formed, but this is going to consist of, these are Green's functions. And basically, they arise out of a perturbation of the path integral, where we expand out that big exponential, and we get all the various different things that particles can do. Well, the first thing is we get tree diagrams. And the second thing we get are loops. Now, the problem with the loops is that they become infinite when you carry out an integral. But we have a cure for that. It's called renormalization. Really, what it's doing is, in the case of us, well, there's two ways of doing renormalization. It's pauli bellars or dimensional regularization. For us, we will assume that we're only ever going to use dimensional regularization due to Tuft, which is a way to evaluate those integrals, which are otherwise infinite. So tree diagrams. For this one, we'll have just a simple vertex. And then all the various different kinds of loops that will crop up. You can't really see much from this because I'm only going to do a simple case today. Fundamentally, this Green's function consists of tree diagrams and loops. So let's do a simple example. So this basically is perturbation theory. this on for the, for the sake of the people who know about this. That's a functional derivative which generates the Green's function. Two-point Green's function is what we're looking at first. Now I have to tell you that I'm going to be working in what's called Euclidean space. of Euclidean space, that is a whole extra lecture. For now, we're just looking at the diagrams, how to stick them together. So we're looking at Feynman rules in Euclidean space. What does that mean? We'll come to that in a minute. simple theory where there are only two final rules, one for the propagator and one for the interaction. Okay? What that means we'll talk about later. So, the interaction 
and that. Now, I'm not sure if I'm working in the work in Euclidean or not. All right. Now symbolically, I'll represent the two-point Green's function in momentum space or x space like this, okay? Well, that's going to consist of the only possible tree diagram for this case is the actual propagator itself. So I'm just going to do what's called one loop. The propagator, well, that's good enough. We can put that in. But what about this one here? I'm going to set up this diagram. It's a one loop diagram. Let me clean everything off the board. at the loop, that's this one, now let's see what way I did it, Okay, so I just said that uh, these indices, so basically we're going to have a sum and an integral, which I write that symbolically from i and all the various different, call this a. I call this j. Right? Okay, so we're going to have different parts. That consists of this propagator here. A, B. Now that I knew that right, AB, now this should be BC. BC, CD, AB, BC. CF. I'm just joining up all these guys here. Okay, so we have to stick it all together now. So we have this sum and integral, which I'm writing now as an integral. Gamma.
and that will give me our actual Feynman diagram corresponding to this loop. All right. Then after that, it's a question of setting it all up. Okay, now actually I'll do that as I put in the numbers later. But I could have an example that looks like this. <coughs> Just a constant for the interaction part and a simple propagator. This would be a scalar field in Euclidean space. This is a long story. Next time I'm going to put numbers into all of that expression.